This is how I set up my website currently with Jekyll. I've got one repository and two branches in GitHub. And on my um, secondary branch for local backup, I have the files that I edit for pages and uh, for collections and stuff for this Jekyll website and uh, on the master build is the github pages build and it's github pages enabled but I'm not using it to build the site I'm using an external service for free called codeship.com to build and the finished site gets put into master and my main website looks like this currently and I've got a blog here which I also pull into the home page just a few of them and I've got a contact page using uh, formsfree.io This is about me. And to edit blog posts, I go to uh, prose.io and let's say I went there. Oops. Go ahead and leave it. All right. And so every time I write a new blog post, I go to my pros account and I also enable the github connection that usually shows down here in the corner so when I want to write a, a new post I just click new file and uh, I have my date and my file name I just click in here and replace this with my post title and then um, in the post itself uh, I just write um, the markdown I just replace all this and just write my markdown I don't need my post title because in my template I've set it up to pull the slug and make it capitalized Occasionally I will write a new title and I will just do that in the GitHub repository and modify the title if I want to. I have not modified my pros configuration to add a title field at this time. And if I want to put an image in, let's say I erase all this. Okay. Let me get a refresher. Okay, so if I want to put an image in, I just click the image box. Uh, usually, before I sign in, there's a um, before I sign in GitHub with Pros, there's a little green box in the corner down here at the bottom right corner to uh, verify with GitHub, and I usually verify it first before I upload the image and then it gives me this little ability to drag and drop an image directly on this area um, or I can select for the dialog box to open up or if I already have an image I can choose something previously or I can type in a local um, a remote hosted image if I have it um, put it here and in the alt text and then insert it and for featured images, I usually put upload the image here, and then uh, the markdown shows here, and I grab the file name for the image and the extension too. And I go to metadata over here on the right, and I put that in here, 
in this field the way this is shown and then I put my image credit and usually with the images from any free service that's completely free uh, that requires credit or not I will um, take the image file and download it to my computer or phone and then <coughs> and then I will um, rename it to have the blog post title slug on the beginning of it followed by the file name original file name followed by uh, the size that I've made it and usually I make it 1200 pixels wide on the widest edge and I'll take that image and open it up in preview on Mac and compress the file size from two or three megabytes down to uh, maybe a hundred maybe 200 kilobytes or less okay and then I re-upload that image here sometimes I will do a 69 ratio crop on it if I really want to if I think it needs it um, but most of the time I'll just do the file compression and just upload the uh, image so this layout right here does not really come with pros it comes after you've configured pros uh, so I've added the published all the way down the comments area so instead I had to remember the metadata every time for just a field so usually what shows up is just this field right here uh, in the metadata area here so I configure my config file in Jekyll with the uh, pros IO configurations and uh, if we go back to our github account um, go back to my full local backup and I go to config.yaml.yml .yaml. and here is if I scroll down a bit here are my pros settings I've got my media going to my assets slash images folder uh, so when they get uploaded they go there automatically and um, the only additional thing I had to create was this links.json.p which I just copied from another uh, repo um, put it in there it's, it's just a common basic script um, nothing to modify so I've got these uh, for posts I've got these different fields um, and then I these L, these values here are based on uh, what they allow for what they say in their documentation you can use and also the element that I'm using actually in my code to call for these variables these values and so I've got some categories here and then I've got my featured image and in the code itself um, I've actually got a path written into the code uh, so that all I have to do is put the file name and then the path just automatically is filled in um, and these are what sets uh, the um, pros IO to uh, um, just work uh, with that those extra settings and the root URL here is where you want the pros IO to start from so that's um, where I say that um, uh, also here you know uh, the layout um, here's where I, I think I'm telling it right about here what what it's supposed to edit somewhere in here I'm supposed to tell it approximately what it's supposed to edit all the time so anyways back up to our main Additionally, in um, in setting this up for code ship, I've got a few extra variables here. I've got to get ignore, and that just says uh, ignore these hidden files, ignore these uh, folders, files, yeah, uh, that are in here. Uh, that's one thing, and then. Um, to say where we're coming from 
the computer, that DS store that you saw. Um, this DS store would be on a Mac, so I'm just saying ignore if you see something on the computer. When I was first pushing it from the computer only to this repo, repository, um, it would pull up these files, and I didn't really need those files, so I um, told it to ignore those files when it pushed it up uh, to this GitHub repository branch. Then I've got a um, rake file. A rake file is just a, a just a name, not something to gloss over on. Uh, it's just a name for a file, a type of file that uh, contains all your instructions that you usually would put in as commands at the uh, command prompt. So if I click on that, uh, I've got a uh, requirement temp directory that's I think that's more of a code ship requirement uh, almost like a variable that we're defining and then um, all this is has to do with uh, rake files and I've got my comments here actually this is what gets output but it's a comment so um, I got a bundle install so that kind of like looks for new gems that I've added. Gems are like plugins in a sense of so new plugins I've added and um, then I've got the build incremental and that just basically means only uh, update the files that have been changed just like when you do an incremental backup backup what's been changed on my computer to an external hard drive and Jekyll Web Mansion is an indie web uh, project where it uh, goes out and looks for websites that have linked to you using a special meta formats to schema markup uh, using the Web Mansion markup and it finds those posts and it puts the whatever they wrote that they sent out on the bottom of your post and then if you write something for them, it sends that out, and then it builds a data log of all that. Then I've got the once it finally builds a site, then it puts it an underscore site, and so here I'm telling uh, the system to uh, move it from that site to a temporary folder which is what this temp directory up here is for. Uh, this is pretty much an empty variable. Um, here's our making our temporary directory up here called temp. And then we've got copy the CNAME file over the temp because we don't want to after we build our site we want to copy the CNAME file unchanged over to the new temp. And then we're switching out uh, into master after we've done our work in the full backup and then we're removing all the files that are currently in the master so that we can put fresh files in there without uh, worrying about writing over and all that stuff then we move our temp directory into that has everything into the uh, the new one and then I touch no Jekyll. Uh, this basically creates a new file called no Jekyll inside the site folder. And uh, it just basically says to GitHub pages that I have enabled on the master not to build that site at all. I'm using GitHub pages as my web host, but I'm not using it to build the site because I've already built it with CodeShip. So you add that in, and then we're adding all these files to the status, as in ready to push them up to another cloud server. And so right now they're all in code ship. Okay, so we've added everything in we we need. Um, and up here, this just sets the uh, users. Um, it's just a requirement. And then now we're going to push. Uh, 
this over to get to GitHub the master and this is our final push so so that's pretty easy rake, rake file to make um, you can modify it to your own settings if you want and I'll go back here I've also got some uh, in the config file you can mention the uh, gems the plugins that you're going to use uh, all these not all these are supported in github pages but if you build it locally or you build it in code ship then there's no argument of why they're there or not so uh, it gets ignored and because of that no jekyll file it gets ignored in github pages and after you've added them here you want to go to um, the uh, gem file and you also put the same ones here and this kind of tells uh, Jekyll that these are the ones that when you do the bundle install that's what they're looking for to make sure they're updated and they're the latest um, back to here And let's see here. So that's it for this part. Now let's go over to um, how uh, CodeShip works. So CodeShip is free to use if you only have one particular um, thing going on. It just, I think it limits to about 100 builds uh, per month, but for me it feels like it's long, more than that, so it could be like maybe a full site build, it limits to 100, but incrementals it's more than that. So um, in the deploy, so I've got, let me go back to, let me go back here to builds. Uh, this is what's happening every time you update something in the full local backup secondary repository. It notices the change and then it uh, goes ahead and builds it to the master. Uh, and then, let me go back here. And then, and this is the project settings. So in settings, when you first set this up uh, in tests, in tests, uh, you for setup commands uh, we choose the custom commands area and then you use the uh, installing so basically it's like you're installing a uh, fresh copy of Jekyll like you would on your computer just once here you're doing it um, for the environment in a sense the coding environment and here I'm telling it to use the specific uh, version of 2.5.1 so my code functions and all that are compatible with Jekyll and then here I install my different uh, uh, tools to uh, be able to later uh, use them so I installed the bundler and the bundler Jekyll and then rake and then sass whatever this is and then the and then the bundle is one of these commands up here so that can finally do the install of Jekyll I guess uh, and then test commands are not necessary and then the next thing is deploy and deploy um, this is if you have something external like a Amazon S3 or whatever but I have a custom script so I edit this and it's just this one bundle exec rake generate and publish it's just saying uh, to take that rake file and do what the rake file says in my repository that it's looking at branches pretty much nothing there environment alright no environment key variables notifications alright so just send me an email when it recovers or it succeeds. Team, there's only me. 
and this is the repository it's looking at. Uh, so that's the one that you connect it to your GitHub repository. And in general, uh, just extra things that you can add to your website if you want. Um, and then it just builds it. Um, so we're done with that. And this is back here. So usually for a build, uh, it takes... With some of these posts, I've noticed that um, they'll go into one of these patches down here, and then it seems like 24 hours later it's still stuck there. So what I've been doing is going into the um, the patch and merging it myself, even though it says it'll do it automatically. Just kind of like don't want to wait too long, and then that seems to make it go forward, which is quite odd why they would have that, but. Um, and, but usually, if uh, uh, generally a post or, or a new page edit, it usually takes 10, 20 minutes for it to be sent out and come back in. Um, it's not because of Jekyll being slow, it's more about um, code ship and their, well, the free tier, you know, it's kind of like limited to what line I'm stuck in, the queue. So, um, Now let me show you a um, some of the code here. Uh, if I go to the index page, this is uh, what it looks like in the preview mode. If I go to raw, this is actually what I edit. Up here is called front matter, and it's all those settings. I have and the layout default it depends on other settings that you set up in your site uh, but most of these settings this title description it just based on uh, um, some settings you set up or other settings that are set up for the theme or other things that you may have set up for a specific collection or layout or something you want to put in the code down here. So then I've got my figure image class and then I've got my own class and then I've got the assets and it pulls in and that's it and then I've got my text um, for the end of text for these for markdown especially it's good to put two spaces before you hit enter so it kind of recognizes there's a paragraph there. Uh, you can use uh, HTML in here if you want. Um, then down here I've got my liquid. Uh, this is what Sh Shopify uses for code, for Boolean code, I guess. Uh, so it's a lot easier to, to set this up than it is to set up a, a WordPress website. There's more PHP stuff. But PHP is more forgiving because it shows you the error. Uh, error processes and what exactly to fix whereas Jekyll is less forgiving where if you don't have it right it just it's just broken so that's what's good about installing Jekyll locally it tells you sort of tells you what is broken but not exactly and you kind of gotta say well I just it was working before I, I ran it locally on the server locally on my computer it was running fine. Uh, now, what what was the last change I made that broke it? Uh, and you can either go back up one in the branch, or you can um, uh, or you can just undo it in the the code. So I I just uh, you gotta have these spaces too, as far as I know. May, maybe not, but it makes it look clean. But um, so here for post and site post. So I've got site post dot size. So site is the whole site, and then post is the like the post, the blog post, and then size is less than zero. So that means if it's empty, I mean if it's if it's not empty, if it's greater than zero, if it's not empty, then do this. So put the code in, the script, 
for the UL tag. And then for every post, for the post, as in singular, in site.post, and then uh, limit four. So only show four of them on the home page there. Then I've got more here, else kind of like saying, you know, if, if the featured image exists, then show the image for it. So here I've got the the path followed by the variable post.featured image. So the featured image uh, variable for the post, and I'll show you that. Um, uh, so that's pretty much it there. And let's go back to a post example. So under posts, and if I go to Let's go here. All right. So here we've got layout posts, publish true, comments true. Then we've got our choice categories in there. Then here's our featured image credit. So that is my. Uh, this is my post. Then dot featured image credit. There's my variable, and that's my value for the variable. So that's what I'm calling right here. For example, featured image when I have it in that liquid post out featured image and it's calling the just the the link here uh, and so you, these layout and published and comments well layout published and categories probably are the are kinda like some default variables for the post and then comments is just if you uh, set up comments on the blog itself uh, it, this is a boolean true or false um, so that I can say well if this post has comments the comments file available for it say I want to take comments then load in uh, discus comments right now uh, and uh, what I do on my post if I go back here to post I don't load discus right away. I load it when people want to click on it to show the comments. Um, so in includes. Here we go. Includes includes are like little files, kind of like in PHP when you include a file, include a header, include a footer. So in here I have uh, comments, but it's called discus here. So I've got. Let's go to our footer. So down here, I've got the code calling in the discus footer. That's our JavaScript uh, JS code in, uh, of sorts. Well, it's the HTML and the JavaScript sort of thing. Um, and let me go back to here. Then I've got uh, the discus. So I've got discus footer. Let's go here one by one. So this is the um, the configuration for discus. And then I've got the uh, discus show and button click. So this is a special code that I got online. Uh, if you search for this, you'll you'll find it. Um, all this code you'll find it on the website it's supposed to be on I just haven't commented the source yet um, so so that's that's the the click on to show comments and then and then there's some JavaScript that I think some JavaScript that makes it show up and then we've got um, I think Let's see here. Did I put it in here? I've got my web mentioned response form. That's a separate one I pulled in. Let me go back to uh, layouts. Layouts is like basically what it means. So post, here's post. And so if I have, if comments, page.comments is true, uh, 
then then put in the comments and then here I'm adding Jekyll web mentions and I'm including that show button on click discus thing uh, and then in the CSS I help with the, the button so if we go back to um, go back to the site and click on a blog post Let's see here Yes, I can go any one of them. So here's a blog post. And then I've got my show comments button here. So as soon as I click on it, then it starts loading discus. So it just helps to um, uh, cut down how much data is trying to get pulled across. I did read something about disk comments. It's like they've got seven or eight trackers just when the site loads. So it, it makes the site load very slowly. Uh, despite this being very quickly loaded. Uh, the advantage of this is these are all files, there's no database. Uh, so it loads very quickly and uh, there's less chance that you can get in your site hacked. Uh, now this looks hard but it is possible to build a website if you need one on your own GitHub repository and uh, we just make one file called a data file and you just go in there and edit the the information that you want to show up on the website and for a blog it'd be probably uh, there'd be a different uh, service like uh, I think Netify it'd be a service like this where you can fill out just like prose you can fill out uh, in a very nice form, you know, with an editor and all that. So it makes it easier to work with. Yeah. Now I did run across, um, let's see here. Did run across this tool, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think it works with GitLab too. I'm not sure. But it allows for you to download this little guy right here, this program, on any platform like Windows, Mac. On Linux and you can edit all this as a beginner uh, with an easy to use interface and you can choose a theme that they have available you know there's no coding or HTML required uh, once you set up things so this looks promising uh, they've got a lot of services here so you can just you know, upload a zip file or you can connect to a file server and uh, just once you're done saving your changes you push it up to those hosting services and you're done yeah so I think this this is a uh, very nice tool glad I ran across it there's a whole bunch of reviews on it um, and it's open source, which just means it, well, it's open collected. So being open source and free to use. So you can donate to them if you want. Um, and they're using Electron, which is basically the same uh, platform that the WordPress software is built on for your computer. Yep. So that's an overview of this website um, using Jekyll on GitHub pages with CodeShip. Uh, I do hope maybe in the future that I'll try GitLab and with their built-in CI uh, continuous integration um, or whatever that stands for. <laughs> um, so thanks for watching and uh, come back and uh, look for another video in the future. Please subscribe and like if you enjoy this video.